Right, good morning everyone. Um, welcome to my talk. Uh, I'm Chris Davenport, I'm on the production leadership team. And I'm going to talk to you today about uh, Joomla 3.6. Uh, no, that's not a mis misprinted. I really do mean 3.6 and not 3.5. Um, okay, that's not working. Let's try that one. Um, you've probably already seen uh, this uh, CMS roadmap. Um, it's on the developer website. Um, okay. Uh, but you need to take it with a bit of a pinch of salt because uh, it's about a year uh, old and uh, there are certainly some changes that, that have already been made to it. Uh, and we're having a PLT Summit meeting immediately following uh, this event, Jane Beyond. Uh, and one of the items on the agenda is to actually review and revise it again. So uh, take what I'm about to say also with a bit of a pinch of salt because the plans may change uh, in the meantime. So right now we're at uh, Joomla 3.4.1, and uh, you're probably aware that 3.5 is is imminent. Uh, I think we're pretty much ready to go with it, so I think we should be releasing 3.5 uh, probably within the next couple of weeks. And then the focus of attention hopefully will then go on to 3.6. Um, 3.6, I would like to think that we can get it out by the end of this year, but uh, that you know, there's there's a lot of variables involved, so we're not entirely sure what uh, what that will whether that will happen or not. Very briefly, let's say uh, just a few words about 3.5. Um, the release leader is is Roland. Uh, it was originally a Roberto, but Roberto had to to step down because of work commitments. He just he was just too busy to be uh, to to complete that uh, that particular task. Um, and we're hoping to include just uh, two main features in this in this release. Uh, Hannes's routing system uh, should go in, and uh, the email notifications plugin. Um, I think it's a plugin uh, from from Nicholas uh, will also will also be in there. Um, the feature that we really wanted to get in there was the, the J layout enhancements. Uh, but sadly, uh, Roberto hasn't had the time to actually finish those, so we're going to probably have to bounce that to a later release, which means it will probably be in 3.6. Speaking of which, um, I actually volunteered to be release leader for 3.6, which is why I'm standing here talking to you now. Um, and there are two main goals for the 3.6 release. Uh, the first one is uh, to improve Joomla translation and multi-language support. Uh, this is something that we put into uh, the roadmap uh, quite a long time ago, and, and things have changed a bit in the meantime. Uh, some things have, uh, some improvements have already been made, so it's not entirely clear actually what this goal is is aiming to to achieve. Um, I've done a few multilingual sites, um, and my my impression uh, is that multilingual uh, works pretty well, uh, but it's actually very hard to set up. It's it's uh, not very user friendly in terms of actually getting it to work in the first place. You've got like a list of things that you have to do, and you have to do them in the right order. And if you miss one out or you mess one up, it just doesn't work anymore. Uh, and it takes you an age to to figure out what you did wrong. Um, so it would be really nice if we could come up with improvements to the user interface in in the administrator to actually make it a lot easier to set up a multilingual site. So if anybody's got any, any ideas as to how they could improve the user interface, uh, ideally even with, with PRs and, and, and code, that's even better, uh, then please uh, get in touch, talk to me, uh, or put a message out on the mailing list. You, let's open it up to discussion and let's see what we can do to improve uh, multi-language support for the 3.6 release. Uh, however, the second goal is the one that I'm particularly interested in. Um, and is the reason, in fact, that I put my hand up to volunteer to be release leader for 3.6 anyway. Uh, and that's to introduce uh, an API into uh, Joomla, into the Joomla core. Um, so Hypermedia, I, I call it Hypermedia API. Um, it's also known as web services. Uh, the web services term has been uh, rather abused over the years, and it means different things to different people. So I prefer to use the term Hypermedia API, uh, by which I really mean that we should have something which adopts the REST architectural style. Now, I'm not going to go into what REST is and all the rest of it. If, if, you, uh, if you need to know, if you don't already know, then please uh, just look it up on, on the internet. But why do we want to add a Hypermedia API into, into Joomla? Well, increasingly, more and more people these days are using uh, Ajax 
in their in their websites. Um, and I'm sure you've uh, noticed that more and more people are using mobile devices as well. So mobile applications now require that you have something running on a server which has an API that you can hook into. Um, and more people are now using CLI applications within Joomla. I, I spend a, an inordinate amount of my time actually just writing CLI applications for Joomla these days. Um, and more people are expecting uh, content management systems to have APIs that they can use for integration purposes. So the, 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 the CMS is no longer just a standalone thing. It's have, having to integrate with lots of other things around it, other information systems that need to have access to, to the content that's within Joomla. Uh, and also, we're, we're beginning to get people talking about uh, the Internet of Things. It's not at all clear how Joomla really fits into that environment, but I think it, it will definitely affect Joomla in some way or another. And we need to be thinking ahead and thinking how uh, Joomla will fit in and work with uh, the IoT environment. IoT very much is, is dependent on, on hypermedia APIs. But taking a wider view, uh, we're, we understand more nowadays, I think, about evolving applications. Over the years, we've been uh, in gradually improving um, the way we handle change uh, within the environment. Uh, so in the early days, we had you know, 1.0, 1.5. Uh, we made a mess of things with, uh, as far as migrations and stuff like that are concerned. It became very, very easy to, to break stuff. Uh, we're now much better, I think, at uh, maintaining backwards compatibility and allowing various parts of the system to evolve. And Roy Fielding, who actually is the guy that, that coined the term uh, REST, uh, said that REST is designed to improve evolvability. Um, it allows uh, clients and servers to actually evolve independently of one another. Uh, and it gives you that separation, but with a loose coupling between the two. And also, I think over the years, we're we gradually understanding more and more about how you actually can build distributed applications. And as Joomla uh, evolves along with the, the rest of the internet, um, we, we need to do more and more of this uh, dis distribution of our applications. It's no longer just standalone websites and standalone CMSs. We're having to integrate into a much wider variety of systems. Um, so how, how do we go about actually adding a, a hypermedia API into Joomla? Well, there are several ways of doing it. Um, at the moment, what we have is a, is a, is a CMS which is built on, on uh, Joomla platform. And we could just add a component in there. Um, and several people have already done this in actual fact, which just, which just adds um, a, a simple API into, into Joomla. Um, it does suffer, that approach does suffer from a number of drawbacks, one of which is that you're largely reliant on Joomla's current routing system, which, as we all know, is not ideal. And there are various other issues that uh, that, that brings up. Uh, so the approach that uh, we're preferring right now is to actually uh, build a standalone application separate from the current CMS that just reaches into the CMS and interacts with it, but is an, is an independent uh, entity on its own. And we're thinking very much in terms of building that application on the Joomla framework uh, for a number of reasons, uh, one, one of which is actually a very good framework. Uh, but it also helps us actually promote the framework as well as being something that we as a project uh, believe in. And we, of course, there are also advantages to the framework as well because uh, actually having a realistic uh, major application for the framework uh, that is in active use uh, will help us improve the framework dramatically as well. So the question is, how do we actually uh, connect the... Uh, uh, the API application to the existing CMS. Uh, and for that, we need to, some sort of adapter. But Joomla isn't just uh, uh, one lump of code. It's actually uh, lots of uh, components that sort of plug together and, and they're more or less coupled with each other. We're gradually trying to uncouple all these, uh, these uh, various components. Web links has already been decoupled. There's an ongoing program to try and uh, decouple some of the other uh, components. Uh, and it, uh, as part of that ongoing program, of course, uh, anyone that would be interested in um, writing code to help us un to help us decouple some of these other uh, components um, for requests or work or code or, or code is very well welcome for that. Um, so Joomla is basically just a, a, a 
federation of, of components, and each one of those will require an adapter. Um, but if we try to look more closely at uh, what a component looks like, typically they're, they're MVC components, uh, but how do we actually interact with those, the, with those, um, with the elements of the MVC? Um, it's not always easy to see how you can do that, uh, and in fact, we'll have to take different approaches in different cases. Uh, it's not necessarily a simple matter of just calling the controller, for example. Um, if we take uh, the example of, uh, say, uh, uh, registering a new user, <coughs> registering a user. Um, You'll get maybe a post request coming in with uh, with the details of that user, which might be a username and password, say. The controller then calls out to the model to save that in the database. Uh, and then when that comes back, it does a redirect. Uh, now, redirects are a problem with APIs because we don't want a redirect in the API. So we can't necessarily use the existing controller code because of the presence of that redirect. So we may have to refactor the controller slightly to, to separate that out, or we may have to uh, write our own bit of controller code to uh, to do the same function but without the redirect at the end. Or maybe we'll end up calling the model directly. I mean, we'll, we'll have to take it on a case-by-case -case basis. So the adapter is going to be a bit of uh, an odd kind of thing. Um, we'll just do whatever's necessary to make it work for the time being. But hopefully it will be a temporary thing. Now, I just want to say a, a, a word about channels. Um, with APIs, the idea, of course, is not to just restrict us to just using uh, the traditional HTTP web channel. We want to be able to access the API through a number of different channels. And by channels, I mean things like <coughs> HTTP, but also things like the command line interface. It would be great to be able to just write a CLI application which uses exactly the same API as our web requests. Um, and very often that will be involving directly instantiating uh, the, the API classes. So I'm not talking about making HTTP requests from a CLI uh, application. I'm talking about directly instantiating. A HTTP requests are expensive. They're slow. Uh, so we want to try and avoid those if we can. Um, but there are also other channels uh, that we can use. Um, uh, Co-app, I don't know if you've, uh, if you've heard of this, uh, the constrained application protocol. It's uh, very similar to HTTP. Uh, but it's also but it's designed specifically for uh, devices which have very little memory or uh, very little power or limited bandwidth. So it's ideal for Internet of Things type applications. It's very similar to HTTP. Um, it, it's it's RESTful, um, but we want to be able to access potentially uh, be able to access Joomla through that route as well. If anybody actually wants to write the code to do that. And there are other protocols as things like MQTT, which is a telemetry protocol, um, and my old favorite message queues, which would allow us to um, uh, call the API asynchronously. So uh, you could have um, uh, stuff happening in the background, but uh, farmed off to another machine or farmed off into a, a separate time um, so you can execute it later. So when it comes to um, thinking about how we manage to um, call our applications with um, across multiple channels, we go and read the Bible. Uh, and what Fowler says in that, uh, in that case is if you need multiple channels, what you should do is introduce a service layer. Um, now, that's something I was thinking about for, for quite a while, and I couldn't <coughs> quite figure out exactly where that service layer should fit into uh, the Joomla architecture. And then I came across uh, this guy, uh, Ross Tuck, who did uh, a, an excellent presentation at a DrupalCon last year. Um, was, the video is online. I wasn't at the DrupalCon, but uh, the video is online. I thoroughly recommend you go and uh, go and actually watch that. He's a very, very good speaker. And uh, what he was saying is, the place to put the service layer is actually in between the model and the controller. Um, and that service layer allows us to define the, the hypermedia API. So where, where you call that service layer is your, is your API. Now it might seem a bit odd to actually put the API in that position. Why don't we put it uh, out here on the, on the left here in, when we're calling the controller and view. And the reason is uh, that actually, well actually you do both because uh, the reason is that uh, the one between the controller, the, the service layer uh, between the controller there um, 
defines a channel independent API. So we're, we're using objects there to, uh, to do the communication request and response objects. Whereas calling the controller is, is a channel dependent thing. So you would have a different controller for HTTP, a different controller for co-app, different controller for whatever. Things like direct instantiation, of course, you don't need to bother with, the, with that. You can just call the, you don't need to bother with the controller, you can just call the service directly. So, but what does this, uh, what does this service layer actually do? Uh, well, in a word, it, it, it does orchestration. Um, and really what it helps us do is to separate the application logic from the domain logic. Uh, now, the domain logic is, is the kind of business rules of, of the application. So it's, uh, it, it's, the, it's the stuff that really, cat, it really counts. It really matters to the business. It's uh, uh, things like when the user registers, you actually save that information in the database, the really critical stuff. And also, it main, maintains the integrity of that data, referential integrity, and all the other sort of business rules that you need to apply around that. But the application logic is things like sending off notifications or logging and stuff like that. They're peripheral to the, to the main business of, 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 the, of the application. Um, but in the process, it helps us define this, this API. So let's uh, have a look at what actually would be in the service layer. And the core of that is, uh, is a command bus, which accepts a command and routes it out to uh, a command handler. And uh, the command handler um, makes calls into the model. Now, it may, just, may not necessarily just be a single call. It could be you're calling multiple models. It may be you're, calling, uh, you're making multiple calls to models. And this is the orchestration aspect of that. So you, you can make the, the, the model uh, methods quite, quite specific and do the orchestration in the surface layer. Then if we zoom out a little bit, um, in, uh, for example, if you're doing domain-driven design, uh, the model will raise domain events. Does it, do people do domain-driven design? Or Not many. <laughs> a couple of people. Okay. So if, if, if you read Evans on, on domain-driven design and uh, Vaughan Vernon, uh, implementing domain-driven design, excellent books, thoroughly recommend them. Um, what they're, what they're saying is that the model raises these these events. So uh, these are these are things that are important within the model that things have changed uh, that need to be notified out to to various other processes. Um, so, for example, uh, if you have a, 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 the command coming in might be um, register a user, uh, that the command handler pushes the the information out to the model. Uh, the model then, then actually uh, saves that information in the database, does all the various updates that it needs to do. Uh, and then having done that, it then raises this uh, event, which might be called uh, user has registered, for example. For example. And then that comes back into uh, the service layer. And the service layer then is responsible for um, publishing the domain events that have occurred. Uh, so in that particular case, we might uh, put it out to uh, a handler which uh, does, sends out a notification email to, uh, to administrators, for example. So it separates out that application logic. So the, um, the notification email stuff is, is, uh, is application logic. Uh, it separates that out from the domain logic that, that stays in the model. I've done this on a couple of projects now, and it, uh, it, it really does tidy up the application. It, it separates things out nicely and makes it really well structured. There's one last thing we need to do is where, where do those commands come from? Uh, the, the API is, is uh, pushing in requests. The, the, uh, because this is channel independent, this is a request object that comes in. Um, and we need to translate that into a, into a command of some sort. So we have some sort of mapper in there which, which does that, that mapping between the requests and the commands that are coming in. Uh, and for those interested in doing SOAP, that is, is the request handle that you would change to do SOAP requests there. SOAP actually is very, very simple in comparison because there's almost a one-to-one -one mapping between the requests coming in and the commands because you're basically doing commands directly onto the, into the domain. Um, REST is a bit more complicated, so that mapper is a bit more sophisticated. 
So if we just briefly uh, look at the r different responsibilities uh, of these of these layers, the model, um, as we know, is is responsible for the domain logic, uh, things like persistence. Um, the service layer, the responsibilities there um, are, uh, you think I've, I've mentioned already, notifications and logging, but almost anything that uh, that you need to hang around the, the, the core business that is just service related, so infrastructure type stuff. Uh, that you need to put in there, and that can be done using a plug-in architecture. Um, uh, transa transactions, that's a good place to do, uh, it, you know, very often you're doing, uh, you're making updates, multiple updates to a model, you're having to do that, but you, but you want the whole thing to be in a single transaction, and the place to put that transaction wrapper is, is going to be in the service layer. Things like that, those are just examples. And then finally, in the controller, it's uh, it's all the channel-related stuff. So uh, authentication, you would do that there. Um, uh, and in the case of redirects, you would put uh, the redirects in, in the HTTP controllers. I put aggregation in there as well. Actually, you could do aggregation at any of those levels. Aggregation uh, is really just uh, bundling data into a single into a single response. So very often, if you're doing uh, web type requests, you want to minimize the number of uh, network requests that you're making. So you, you, you might want to get a response which has data from a number of different sources bundled into one single response. Uh, and you would do that within the controller. You do with that aggregation within the controller. There. But you can also do aggregation at different levels within, within the system there, depending on what you need. So that's just to, to reiterate that uh, the controls are channel dependent, the rest is, is independent. So um, just to summarize, uh, the, the, the service layer then is, is, a, is a clear position uh, for uh, the application boundary. So when we think of our applications, we can think of that service layer as being the surface of that uh, that application, we don't care what's inside that. We don't need to know the details of how it works inside that. That's that's our boundary, and it reveals the right level of granularity that's required for the API. We don't need to know the details of the models because that's much too granular. If we're doing network requests, we don't want that level of granularity. We need to be able to to operate at a at a higher level than that. And it allows us to separate out our, our channel dependent code from the channel independent code. So in 3.6, uh, well, this is basically where we are now. We've got uh, MVCs um, based on the old MVC structure. Um, and we, we make calls into those through uh, like index.php. This is obviously hugely simplified. Of, you know, there's a lot more complexity in there than I've shown. I've just tried to get it down to the bare minimum there. And what we're proposing for 3.6 is that we actually build a separate application, um, which will make calls into a new MVC structure, which, which has a, a service layer in it. Uh, and I put the entry point there as being slash API, but I think that actually should be um, like a configuration variable, so you can put it really pretty much anywhere you want. And at some point, we're going to have to call from, from there into the existing CMS or an existing component or whatever it is that, need, that it needs to do. So the model in that new MVC structure pretty much is the adapter that would need it to be uh, that needs to be written. But ideally, of course, going forward, we would actually like to refactor uh, these these older MVC structures to actually make use of a of a new MVC, um, so that they are basically using the same code. And ultimately, what what that allows you to do is to uh, just have the same code in the back end, the, the, the service code service and model code is basically the same, and we're just putting different controllers and views on the front to, fulfill, to fulfill what we need to do uh, for each particular channel. So the traditional web um, environment, the controller and view will, will do the, the server-side rendering and deliver HTML uh, in the same way that it currently does. But the API has a much more efficient route uh, that just uses channel-specific uh, controllers and views to access the service uh, in that way. Um, and then once you've got an API, once you've got that standard in place, 
it makes it very, very easy then to rearrange the furniture behind the scenes. You don't need to, once, you, once you've got that API, you, you, you code to the API, you don't code to anything that's behind that. So moving forward to Joomla 4, and thinking forward to Joomla 4, whatever that turns out to be, and I don't know any more than you do in that regard, um, it doesn't matter. We don't need to know because uh, we're, we're, coding, we're coding our clients to the API. We don't, we're not tied to the specific architecture of Joomla 4. So this will help with migration. It makes it much easier to uh, migrate forward uh, to these future versions. And we could even get a, a scenario in which you have um, a website which is partially running on Joomla 3 and partially running on Joomla 4. We could actually migrate a component at a time rather than having big bang migrations. We can, we can just say move the content uh, one day and then move some other part of the system another day and just upgrade as we, as we need to do that. So uh, just to summarize then, that's, that's the main goal as far as I'm concerned that we, we want to try and achieve for, for 3.6. Um, and it should, I think, be well tested. I mean, we're going to, uh, wouldn't say necessarily it'll be test-driven development, but we'll try and get as close as that to, uh, as we can. Uh, and just having the API there in the first place allows us actually uh, to be able to test it much better because it's, it's easier to test these hypermedia APIs than it is to uh, test, uh, you know, the output of HTML systems, for example. Uh, and I'm determined that it should be well documented. I think I have some history in documentation. So. Um, and of course, hopefully built to modern standards as well. So what's next? If you're interested in, to get involved, then please get in touch with me. Um, I need all the help I can get because I, I can't do this on my own. All I'm doing is leading this effort. I can't write all the code or anything like that. So. Um, I shall be doing as much as I can, but uh, I need help. Uh, and that's all I wanted to say. Now this is deliberately, uh, I've kept the number of slides fairly short. I hope I've got a reasonable amount of time left. Um, because actually I want to hear from you. I want to hear the feedback and I want to hear uh, what you think we should actually put into Joomla 3.6 because I think it's important that, it's, that we are responsive to what people actually need. Uh, and it's not just all coming from me and saying, oh, this is what we should do. It should be uh, coming from you as well. So basically, over to you guys. What uh, what do you think? Yes, Nick. Chris, uh, what you want to present is to a very great degree. I have already done. So uh, most of the products we're trying to buy is uh, already written. I have the hard layer. Uh, what you're calling a controller, I call it faster, but okay. Uh, what you're calling a service. Could be a slightly refactored controller of what I already have. The model is okay. Uh, I already have the different views you need for HTML, for desktop, for this and that, other protocols. So uh, probably we should just collaborate and improve the already written code instead of uh, trying to reinvent yet another way that improves the function. Yeah, let's talk. Yeah, by all means. And this is uh, an area that interests me. Good. Excellent. <laughs> yes, Michael. <laughs> I don't have a plan for PHP 7 support. I think it's ongoing. I think it's obviously something we have to do. Um, does it change what, we're, what I've just said? I don't think so. Um, I don't know. What, what would you like to do for PHP 7 support? You think we need a compatibility layer to do it, there? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I think PHP 7 is end of this year, I guess. Is it something like that? Towards the end of this year? So, yeah, we do ne definitely need to work on that. Yeah. Sorry, what was that? Exceptions. Right.
Okay. Well, <laughs> just shout louder, George, because it's. <laughs> But that could just be an ongoing work that we just alter the code to, to change that type hinting, presumably. Can we? Oh, well, let's talk about it later rather than, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yes? Um, I, th I think probably it will be a separate downloadable package rather than being distributed within the, the current Joomla um, system um, because not everyone will want an API and probably the vast majority of people right now will probably not want an API um, because it's, it, ultimately it's another way in which you can introduce security vulnerabilities I and mean, if we get something wrong you've got a security vulnerability which no, which which will affect lots of people, but they won't even know that they're even, they've even got that code there. So it's probably better initially, at any rate, to actually have it as a separate download. I'm open to opinions on that. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm not saying that's definitely the way we should do it. But, uh, yes, Chad. <laughs> yes, yes, definitely. That that has to be done. Really, that's definitely a part of that. Yeah. Yes, Beat. Right. And at the same time, it's a driving factor for the owners. They receive need to the benefits of what they are doing. Yeah. 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 On the Raspberry one, uh, yeah. we love to this. On the Raspberry one, uh, user migration of all the releases, it might be like what that will be used in the library easier. Mm -hmm. It will bring back all the tools. That will be a major benefit. We still have about three quarters of the community stuck in Google 1.0 and 1.5. Uh, it's not something that we want to do forever like that. So it could be a very big benefit as well. Yep. And um, above that benefit, we need also to communicate with the vision that the benefit uh, for the world. Joomla had a, the command who had a vision to empower by simplicity to, for, for everybody to get content online on the web. And that dream came true thanks to Mando uh, and Joomla. And that mission itself, the world, is now accomplished. So Joomla needs a new mission to the world and to manage it and say, do you want to see for chips or not? <laughs> <laughs> And one of the benefits is to bring back the community together. We all can do this. Another benefit to the world would be to, to show how Juma could become uh, a centerpiece for the internet connected things. Like a lot of devices now, uh, the homes, the have an API that will address all the open whatever. And uh, one of those benefit features that we can add to that would be library. You have your 
website will show the light in that hole, your flares, your heat in the smart meter. And just for that. Make sense in the river. That's that's one idea. The two ideas that we could yep. bring on top of that. And then from the smart meter perspective, we bring the city from down. And so it do not helps connect the world. Or connects with your belongings and things. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Not something which makes a dream and gives, gives a, a big sense to what we are trying to achieve with the management. I think that this is something which is really important. This is a vision and this is a motivation of this. Yeah, I would I would certainly not disagree with anything you've said there. Um, another another aspect actually is um, the movement towards open data, and I think that actually we we Joomla could have a role to play in that actually in making it much much easier for people to get access to data because at the moment we we sort of put data put content into our CMSs and it's pretty much locked in there. It's very difficult to get that content out and distribute it elsewhere. Uh, and the open data movement generally is 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 all about making it easier to access content. And I think Joomla could actually play a very play a very key role in that. Yes, Matthias. Uh, you mentioned domain design. Yep. Are there any plans to actually change the portals? Do you have the new service or in the next few portals, but actually have the model as a domain? We d we don't have any plans at the moment, but it's very much on my wish list that we should do that. I'm very keen on DDD myself, so uh, yeah, I think we should we should definitely do that. But that's up that's something that's up for discussion at the uh, the next PLT meeting as, as to whether we we should head in that direction or not. So, uh, but I think it's also a, a subject for a wider discussion too. Um, that we should perhaps discuss it on the CMS mailing list maybe at some point. So yeah, I, I'm I'm keen on doing that. I'm keen on heading in that direction. Yeah. 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 Yeah, we, we need to do a lot of work in modernizing the, uh, well, particularly the MPC uh, that we're currently using. It was okay back in 2008 when it was first put together, but uh, it's it's creaking a bit right now. <laughs> yes. Uh, you absolutely yes. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah. uh, what I want to get to the position is that, that the, the components within the Joomla CMS that we're distributing are actually good examples of how you should write uh, components and write, should write these things. At the moment, they're not very good examples. You can do much, much better than the way we're doing it. Um, so we, we need to be back into the situation where we're setting a good example for extension developers and integrators and, uh, and so on. Sorry? Cold web links. Yeah, oh yes, yes, I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We may not, I, I don't know, I mean, I've been looking, web links is such a simple component that actually uh, it's not really a terribly good example in that respect. It's actually, it doesn't set you enough challenges to, to know how to do things properly. Um, and I've been looking recently at, uh, at uh, ComContact instead. Uh, Contact has a few more interesting pieces to it, and using that as an example of how you should do things is perhaps a better, th a better model than, uh, than, than using WebLinks. But I wouldn't do it right now. The, the, the current state of ComContact, uh, don't go there. <laughs> yes? Well, both. Well, you're decoupled from the channels, so you could actually do it either way. I mean, whatever protocol you're using, um, you you can write an adapter or you can write a controller, whatever that that uh, that either works synchronously or asynchronously. I mean, I put message queues on the on that list as you, as you've noticed, which is very definitely an asynchronous. 
communications method. Um, so yeah, you can you can use either. Yes, Harry. Uh, I, I wanted to say that uh, following with what Michael said in his presentation uh, about having a mission and to bring excitement, I think that uh, you put the mission there. Uh, I'm excited with it. So, and um, thank you very much for jumping in in, in the frequency. I think I, I want to contribute in the testing area if possible, and you might be part of, of this. So. Excellent, excellent. Thank you, Harry. Uh, anybody else? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, come again. Yeah, I don't see why you shouldn't do that. Um, I mean, that's not the REST way of doing things. REST tends to work by, by polling uh, services. Um, but there's no reason particularly why you shouldn't push stuff out to the clients uh, if you want to do that. It's, it's not. Yeah, no, I can't do that, but what is very useful, and when you find the components, you Is there somewhere in, in the Joomla CMS right now where that would actually be of use? I, I can't think of anything off the top of my head where you would actually use that. <laughs> yeah, but then it's up to them to write the code to do that, really, I guess. I mean, we can write the adapters and stuff like that so that it's it's very easy out of the box to actually implement that, but I, I can't actually see an, a use for that within the core at the moment. Yeah. Oh, okay, right. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there are obviously there are use cases for it, absolutely, yes. But I'm I'm not sure that I can think of anything that you would want to put into the the CMS distribution that actually does that out of the box, as it were. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, and are we doing all right of time? <laughs> yes, Chad. Yeah, you mentioned using the interface. Can you uh, tell me the challenges that you see with the interface? For the, uh, the hypermeter API, you mean? Yeah. Well, the hypermeter API stuff really doesn't have a user interface. It's all, it's all running behind the scenes. The only area where you get into a user interface is for things like um, key management, where we'd probably have to put a component in the back end. Okay. To allow you to to uh, set up the tokens and what have you for the security system, um, but other than that, I don't think there's mo very much of a UI aspect to that. Yeah. Okay, are we done? <laughs> Thank you very much, everyone. <laughs>